Hello and welcome to Matrix Live. My guest today is is actually the VoIP team. Uh, we don't have Robin with us, uh, but we have Florian, who is the expert cluster lead. So in human speak, part of your duties is to be the VoIP team lead. Uh, we have Timo and Andrew, who are software engineers uh, in the VoIP team. Welcome everyone. And before we start diving into the Matrix Live, I want to remind everybody that the Matrix conference is going to take place in Berlin, Germany because there is a Berlin somewhere else, on September 19 to 22. Uh, we are that close to release a schedule. It, needless to say, there's going to be a public sector track, and it's been very, very difficult to rule out some of the fantastic proposals we got, because we got 64 of them. Uh, next year, we will definitely need a bigger venue to open more tracks, uh, to not have that, that sort of problem. If you want a ticket for the conference, or if you want to give your company some visibility, uh, you can sponsor us. In any case, head out to 2024.matrix.org. We have all the information out there. All right, back to Matrix Live. Uh, so this Matrix Live is used uh, is recorded using Element Call, and I mostly rely on Element Call whenever I have uh, somebody I need to talk to and somebody I need to see. Uh, but I'm being told that you are fixing a few pep cuts uh, in Element Call. Uh, so I think the bulk of the work is going is going to be around uh, making the membership count reliable. But I'm sure there are plenty of other things you are fixing. So can you tell me, from a user perspective, what is or what are the problems that you are solving? Yeah. Hey, from the VoIP team, welcome, and nice that we are here at Twim. Um, yeah, let's give a bit of history. Um, so basically, um, the whole element call stuff started with an MSC 3401, uh, aka um, crew calling for matrix. Um, and at that point in time, we were not using sophisticated technology like a single forwarding unit where you have a backend component which can redistribute all the media to save uh, bandwidth on the various uh, ends. Um, it was also the beginning, the first attempt to get crew calling into Matrix. At that point in time, um, and that is the origin also for the, the issues we see right now. And one of it is that we might sometimes have uh, some um, unreliable uh, count of how many people are attending a call is um, that we didn't, that we had shared ownership of state. So basically, when you started a call, everybody could start a call. And if it was at the same time, then you would have floating 10 calls in parallel in that room. And that results in split brains and whatever. And over the time, uh, we decided to work with eventual consistency rather than against it and um, evaluated um, what we can change here and develop the protocol further in, in that way that we take care of clear ownership of state. So that is the guiding theme here. Um, that helped a lot in terms of split brains and all these issues. Um, and now we are at, let's say, the final state of um, how we can improve here. And that is basically what happens if someone uh, is um, losing network connection or just uh, closing the browser tab. In that case, the underlying matrix client has not the ability to clean up the state. And now we need a good solution for that. So that's the, the high level um, overview of that thing. The other thing uh, which we evolved over time is that in the very early days when we used um, full mesh, so basically um, a network connection, a video network connection was established between all the participants in the call. Um, we, we noticed that going forward, there might be better technologies than WebRGC or whatever. And hence, we um, separated the, the matrix state events in, in that sense that we now have a very high level um, signaling layer like, hey, I'm Tip and I want to participate that call. Uh, whereas the, uh, the actual RTC backend, which we want to use, deserves then its own implementation and also its own MSC. So that's, that's the two directions uh, which we improved over time. Okay, so you have mentioned a few, uh, a few technical concepts here, uh, in particular the state events, uh, that's a matrix thing. You have mentioned the SFUs, you have mentioned LiveKit. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about the relationship with all that? Because yeah. the call is not happening just on matrix, but a bit of it is happening on matrix and the state is, in, is involved, uh, not the nation state, but the matrix state. Uh, and then there is the SFU, the WebRTC connecting the two. What is happening? Yeah, so basically the um, 
one of the DNA of Matrix is that the client and the UX of the clients is based on how the underlying state is. So hence, it was super important to not rely on too many um, external components. Um, so reliable state is the key here to have a good UX. Um, so and now to connect all the dots. Um, in order to have, so the, there's a super awesome um, open source project, LifeKit, you mentioned it already, and I mentioned it also. Um, and they basically took um, the free and open source and open standard WebRTC technology and put a super sane developer friendly container around it. Um, and we, we didn't want to invent the wheel and a second time, and hence we decided, okay, let's use this super awesome tech, tech stack. And that was basically the idea um, that we also evolved in the, the, the matrix RTC signaling towards being agnostic of the actual RTC implementation. That's the idea here. So today we're using LifeKit, tomorrow it might be um, web transport or Cloudflare or whatever is the best technology then the next day. Okay, and so what is the relationship between uh, Matrix itself and LifeKit? Um, so, for example, when I'm starting a call using Edelman Call, I, I'm joining the client. So, what is happening? To, I'm never seeing a, a chat room or anything. So, what is happening between the two? Okay, um, so the 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 setup of a call is the following: your client starts sending a state event where you say, hey, I'm Tip, I want um, to um, attend a call. So a state event is a sort of invisible message that you send in a room. As yes, it's right. It's a, yeah. it's a key value. So um, basically, it's a message that you can't really see that is happening invisibly in a, in a room. And that's a state message. Sorry, go ahead. Yes. Yes, right. That's that's basically it. Um, and here you say, hey, I'm Tip, I want uh, to participate in the call and you can reach me via this SFU. And okay. that's basically it. That's the, the, the fundamental concept here. Okay. And then the client just goes to the SFU and say, hey, I have this information. I want to join this yeah. call. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. So yeah. can, can you tell us a bit more about what is causing the membership issue and, and how do you want to fix it? Yeah. I think now it's a good point in time to hand over to someone who really knows how that works. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure Timo or Andrew who wants to go for that. Andrew, I guess you go first. Uh, I am not even joking. I literally lost sound for that exact sentence. Perfect. So can you please repeat the then, question? Then it's, or, or it's my chance to talk. Um, so I, I think then it's also totally fine if, if I take over. So um, if we have, let's say, five or six people and they all join, we have, as the explained, in the background, in the room state, like the same place, we also store the room name and the avatar of the room, those kind of like stateful things, which always need to be available without like scrolling up the timeline. Um, we store there that we have those five participants and the additional information, SFU, and yeah, some other some other metadata. Um, and now it can happen that one of the clients just crashes or has a bug and doesn't send any new events. So it is possible that um, two weeks later the room state still has two proper like three people properly left, and the other two people are just in the state um, and now clients don't have any way to tell um, what's happening there. So they just say, oh, there's an ongoing call with two people, but those people are not connected to the SFU since a long time. Um, that's quite annoying because you not only get a wrong counter in the top left corner on the single page application of Element Call, but in the actual app, we also use the state information to immediately render, oh, this room has an ongoing call. And then we show a little green banner where it says ongoing call, and we show you a join button where you can press to join the button. And it's super annoying if you have five join buttons and you press on them and there is nobody in the calls. Um, so that's the that's the main main issue which users will encounter when when they don't yeah when this is not working properly. So the older a room is, the more chances there are that some people um, uh, dropped from the call and that never actually got registered by uh, by the app. Exactly. Yeah. It's as quick as you just pressing Control W without pressing Hang Up, and then you have one person always being there in the call, never, never leaving. Okay. And so, uh, what are you going to do to fix that? I suppose it's it's something that we can fix. 
definitely. I think I'll, I just go with what we do now because mm -hmm. there is like this was in our heads from from day one. Mm -hmm. um, but um, there are better solutions to what we do now. But it's still good to have have an idea what our, our initial um, solution for this was. Um, and that is that we store in the state event a timestamp when the state event isn't um, valid anymore. Um, and that is very nice because then um, we have an invalid state event, which means the current time is much, much larger than the timestamp until it's valid in the state event. And it's a very easy computation for the client to do. It just downloads the state event, sees there are five people in the call, uh, in the room, in the current session. Um, it does this simple logic on each event and it notices, oh, all of them are invalid. So then this translates to this room state shows zero active memberships and it can do all the UI rendering accordingly. Um, the issue now is that uh, what if we say the expiration happens after 10 seconds, which would be nice because then I um, somebody disconnects and 10 seconds later, they, they are not there anymore. But that also would mean that if I join the call and we have a proper conversation for 10 seconds, um, as soon as we go over 10 seconds, like the other people's client think, oh, this guy isn't connected anymore. He has an invalid state event. Um, so inevitably, we have to update our state um, to represent the new timeout. So if we do the 10 second example, we would update our state event every 10 seconds. And updating state is not too cheap because you also have to do state resolution and it has to federate and it has to go into the bag. So if you have a call with, let's say, 50 to 100 people, which is totally possible with LiveKit, you can scale calls pretty, pretty good. Um, you would have thousands and thousands of state events every 10 seconds, so that's not realistic. What we do right now, I think, is a 30-minute expiration. So I join, I say, in 30 minutes, my state event is invalid. And then after 30 minutes, I still have to resend. So even that isn't perfect from a performance point of view. Um, because 50 people in a call means 50 state events as soon as a 30-minute mark is reached. Um, and in addition to that, um, yeah, we we could, like, it's always this trade-off, and we have a really long time, sorry, just lost train of thought, and we have a really long time for um, when the people are actually displayed as disconnected. Because if I join, after one minute, my client crashes, it still takes 30 minutes where you get shown oh, there's an ongoing call, even though there isn't. So those are the pro and cons, or like only the cons of the of the current solution or where we, where we started, basically. All right, so th this is the current solution that we are working on. Uh, I think you have tried pro potentially to think about other solutions. Are there more solutions that you have not explored yet? Or is it very likely to be going the one you, you are going to take? Um, so who's taking this? I, I think I'll do one one idea we had, and then Andrew might do the next ones. Um, so one idea was that we could use the SFU, which knows already who is connected. Mm -hmm. um, and we could just ask this SFU, like, is this person still in a call? Um, but the, the really big challenge we get with this approach is that the biggest benefit we get from those state events is for people who are not in the call. This is kind of counterintuitive because one would think it's only relevant if you're in a call to know who is there. Um, but with a matrix client, you have things like you want to ring, you want to um, display ongoing calls. And since everybody does their own clients, some people may want to do this on an additional page. So it is really important that you can just start up your client, go through the sync loop, and immediately know in which room a call is ongoing. And you don't get this, this feature if you have to ask the SFU separately. So um, if we go with this approach um, and we have a room which, uh, sorry, an, an account which has, let's say, 200 to 500 rooms, which is not too unrealistic, um, there could potentially in each room be a session with member events um, where we don't know if they're expired or not. Um, and my client would now need to go to each of those SFUs. The information can be found in the, in the state event and need to ask this SFU, is there actually somebody in the call, is this valid or invalid? Um, and that would be super, super expensive because it needs a asynchronous network request and um, with lots of rooms, lots of traffic would be required just to display your room list properly. Um, so that's why we really wanted a solution for, yeah, using the sync loop and immediately being able to tell what's going on. But that was one of the ideas. 
And to build on that point, another part about Element Call is that it's meant to be very flexible in how it actually manages calls. So it may be the case that most calls will use an SFU, but it's possible that some will just be a one-to-one -one yeah. connection. Okay. And so that would mean there would there would be some calls where there would simply be no SFU to ask about the state. So having a solution that is purely based on the matrix side to manage state and memberships would be the most flexible option because every call will have matrix state managing it. And so that would just keep it as generic as possible. All right. Um, and I think Timo, you mentioned another solution uh, that you delegated to uh, to Andrew. So yeah, what was what was so. that solution? Uh, well, one idea we have is based on the very experimental MSC, which is the general idea is that once clients are to join a call session, if they are unable to continuously report that they are in the call, um, the home server will effectively send an event on their behalf to say that they are no longer in the call. And so that will up, that will guarantee that the call membership state will be updated if something were to ever go wrong. Um, that idea is bouncing around a few different ideas of how it would be done. Um, one interesting way we may approach this is to take, um, take some inspiration from MQTT's last will and testament idea, where there is some guarantee that if a client were to be disconnected from the call, um, there is some sort of contract involved to um, to let everyone know what the final state would be if that member were to disappear. Um, and there are a few different ways that we could go about doing that as well. Um, we have some ideas of maybe using a bot or an app service to track memberships. Um, and we always want to make sure that whatever we end up doing is going to be as compliant with the rest of the spec as possible. So um, if, if there are ever any events that are being sent on behalf of clients, um, one future consideration is that there should be authenticity in which events are sent. So um, it shouldn't be that home servers can simply send events on clients' behalf and no one else will know that that event didn't really come from that user. So, um, and that would be handled by event signing. So wh whatever events are sent by whatever mechanism we decide to use um, has to be done in such a way that we can still get event signing from the client from where the event is supposed to come from. Um, but this is part of the, the MSC process, just to try to find ideas that are the most compatible with everything else that belong in Matrix. But I think what we can mention here is that we, for one of the MSCs, we also have a, a prototype implementation. Um, and I'm pretty sure that we will post a nice video today in the trim, which demonstrates that it also works uh, in real life. And now we really need um, to go through the spec core team um, um, process in terms of which of the MSCs um, is is hitting then the, the final stage. Um, but the idea basically is that we now ensure also reliable state in case of network problems or um, people just um, terminating their client and the client has no chance to update the state on its own. Yeah. Okay. And to, oh, sorry, yeah, to go first. Go ahead. Oh, cool, cool. Because I wanted to add um, one thing. So basically the core principle that we have the chance to, whenever somebody is out of the call, that this is mimicked in the state event. That is basically something which we're quite convinced is a is a good concept. And there is an additional property which allows or which this enables, and that is that we can use the state events to also track history of calls. So whenever we have the guarantee that I'm me disconnecting is represented in the room state, whatever the exact solution will be. Um, we can basically see a state change from me being connected, me having information about the SFU and everything, to me being disconnected as a leave event, and me being disconnected, a state change to me being connected um, as a join event. And those are really easy to parse because in the unsigned field, each home server will send you the previous content. So it's just a matter of the client just checking what was the previous content, was it, what is the current content, and then they can immediately tag an event as joining or leaving. And if we think of a, a timeline where each user has their own um, row, um, we can easily have highlights where, or we can easily compute highlights where somebody was connected and then use those, um, yeah, use this combined timeline to compute one big state. Um, so that would be a very elegant, non-redundant way of just displaying who was in a call for which duration in the timeline. Um, so basically, if we if we manage to have a guaranteed disconnect 
then then we are really good. Um, and that's also what is ruling out solutions where we use a real time mechanism. So similar to what I proposed before with the pinging the SFU, that of course doesn't work for history because then we cannot tell um, that somebody was not disconnected, or wasn't connected at that point in time because we would need to ping the SFU to that point in time, which of course doesn't work in the, in the future. Um, so whatever we do, we try to really um, hold true to this to this paradigm that the state is always representing this. Um, and yeah, the, the current implemented way is, um, as Andrew said, that we just have a heartbeat endpoint um, where we tell the client uh, we, we tell the home server that we are still connected and we basically pre-send our leave event. Um, so we, we send both, both join and leave and then the home server first puts the join event into the DAG and whenever the client isn't able to fulfill their contract of being online anymore, what that exactly looks like, thoughts about using the current sync loop or this heartbeat, um, it's, not, it's not converged yet. Um, but as soon as that contract fails, the leave event will be sent and we have a very very reliable way there all right so it sounds like you have a you have a potential solution that uh, works really elegantly with um, integrates very elegantly with how matrix already works um, which is plenty fine uh, but my next question is probably going to be for florian let's assume um, i am a large entity an organization and i really like element call and i want element call to make some progress very fast um, at the moment, what can I do? Should I try to bribe the spec core team? Uh, should I try to get you more developers? What is the best way uh, to, to get element uh, core moving forward? Yeah, um, that's a good one. So basically more people, more developer will help you a lot. Um, that would give us the opportunity to really build a very sound foundation where we can build arbitrary, super cool applications on top of it, like interactive whiteboards and whatnot. Um, and I think also the, the conference in, in Berlin in September would be a perfect opportunity to get in contact with some people to really discuss um, their needs and what we have in the back of our mind and to see how that matches. But yeah, the, uh, long story short, we need more people working on it in order to get it, to get it done. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Is there anything we forgot to mention that you want to add to conclude the episode? Uh, yes, please all join the Matrix conference and have a look um, at element, our element call talks and Matrix RGC talks. And please give us feedback what um, yeah what features you would like to have and and how it works on your end. All right, fantastic! Thank you very much all, and I see you around Matrix Live. Bye bye. <laughs>